Alright guys, so just to follow up on the previous videos, <clears throat> how to prep up some stainless pipe, right? So this is the way I do it. I bevel it at a 30 degree angle, feathered edge. You don't want no landing on it to get a good root pass in there. And the inside, you want to pencil grind it or die grind it, clean the inside, make sure it's really clean no oxide no oxidation no contaminants in there to get a clean bead and on the outside you're gonna want to clean the chromium oxide as well smooth clean you get a clean weld you really don't need to for a welding test i suggest you do just to be on the safe side but i've passed plenty of x-rays x-ray shots without having to clean the oxide the chromium oxide on the outside and we're going to be welding this 90 on there and you also want a feathered edge clean the outside clean the inside probably about a three eighths of an inch feathered edge guys so that's what you want we're going to be using our purge plug this is our purge hose and we're going to go and get it so I'm using some sword clamps, two inch to fit up my 90 onto the pipe. And I'm going with a loose 1 8 gap again, guys, since I'm using 332nd rod. As you can see, I could fit it in there pretty good. Could move it around if I need to. That's, that's how I like to weld. I don't like using big, big old gaps because there, there really ain't no point of me putting that much metal inside of a pipe. So the bigger the gap, the more heat input, the bigger the heat affected zone. And you really don't want that. You know, you just want to penetrate and get it over with, go on to the next thing. So one eighth loose gap in there, a three thirty second rod. I use about 65 70 amps sometimes 70 75 depends on how how fast it closes up the the smaller the gap the hotter i go since i got a keyhole dip but i'll try to weld it pretty quick that way it doesn't shut and right now what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be bridge tacking i don't want to penetrate yet just bridge tack it and we'll go from there so we got our bridge stacks in there, a little drippy, and we're gonna get started on the well. But first, I'm gonna get our purge going. Probably run about 30 CFHs here. And we got this taped up. I'm gonna tape the bevel. You don't wanna put the adhesive on the pipe. That way it doesn't get on there when it gets hot. You just wanna kinda use a little bit of tape the other way around. I'll show you guys what I mean. So the adhesive part is on the outside. I just used a little bit of tape facing the pipe about right here. Then I flipped it around and went over the pipe. That way all the adhesive is on this side of the pipe. You want it facing you so it doesn't get on the pipe. As well as over here, you don't need to be placing it on the pipe at all. Just place it on the bevel since so you're going to clean up the bevel here in a minute and that's pretty much it
Alright guys, so the bridge tack. Make sure you guys don't leave any anything in there. So just be sure to clean it out. Otherwise you're gonna get some sugar in there. And maybe some burrs. So we're pretty much clean in there on the stop. I usually grind it up a little bit just to get a, a better fusion on my beat. It, it just fuses a little bit better, more uniform. So I grind it up a little bit and just keep that bevel clean, guys. Don't leave any, any birds in there. So when you bridge tack, you don't wanna let it drip too much to where it falls into the bevel, inside the bevel. You gotta clean that up if it does. And that's pretty much it, guys. Our bead is in there, looking nice. Let's go ahead and finish as well. tie in make sure you guys give yourself a little think of it as a boat ramp you don't want to just jam it into the marina you, you you want a little ramp in there you know what i mean so give yourself a little ramp a little landing and also guys give yourselves a breather this is how much of a breather i'm giving myself um you don't want the argon just in there Otherwise, it's gonna blow your your bead out. So you wanna you wanna leave an exit for the argon for the oxygen to purge, and that's pretty much it. Just like I said, give yourself a landing, little ramp, and go ahead and tie it in. without a perch in there i usually buff it out you know clean it up a little bit clean the black oxides whatever is burnt out a little bit up after i clean it up i go ahead and and hot pass i'm probably going to throw the, the hot pass around 90 90 amps for you guys and we'll go from there so this thing is pretty much ready to cap guys get a little high low on our fit then clamp them clamp it right i guess it'll be paying more attention but it's minimal not that much Alright guys, well there you have it, another stainless uh, welding video from yours truly, not the best weld at all, there's a lot of good welders out there, but just wanted to make another video touching base on the prep up, fit up, amperage, argon pressure used for 
welding some 316L. Since I wasn't very descriptive on my previous videos due to the fact that there was a lot of fabrication going on, uh, I, I felt the need to touch base on this since especially right now that there's work is picking back up. I know a lot of uh, newer guys are getting ready to test and sustain this. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, if it doesn't, I'm sorry. I tried, but if you like this, this video and, and find it useful, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel, guys. Hit, hit the notification button. It will boost my ratings as well. It helps even more when you guys do that. So I appreciate you guys watching. See you on the next one. See what we cook up next. Oh, by the way, perch plugs, guys. Perch plugs for all the small bore piping. Hit up my boy James. I'm going to leave the description to his uh, Instagram account down below. So if you guys want to get some of these, man, they they work wonders. So you guys hit my boy James up for, for some purse plugs. And I'll see you on the next one, all right? Peace.